We're just coming, just coming back from Limoges, um, and we pass this property regularly. These beautiful, grand French houses. Lot. I thought I'd just quickly show you, show you this house. Um, we're on a little hamlet. This was much more popular at one point. Oh, let me get in the way of the sun. What am I doing? There we are. This was much more popular at one point where this road was a main road going to Paris. But now that's replaced by the A20, which is a much heavier, uh, almost motorway, freeway style road. So this road is redundant. So it's scattered with old restaurants and hotels, which have long passed any opportunity of being successful because there's no traffic, there's no footfall. Um, and this is one that's always caught our eye, but let me just show you it, it's beautiful. So at the moment I'm at the back entrance. Um, and can you just imagine coming up here originally and, and driving up and opening your courtyard gates and then behind this tree here, you can't see it, uh, looks to be, again, we don't know, we've not been in, looks to be like a gatekeeper's type uh, property there because we can see, um, we can see uh, some chimneys. And just looking here, right, these innocent brushes, I'm wondering, you just about make out there's a, a, a straight edge that could be a retaining wall. There could be, originally, there might have been water the other side of there. Um, I'm speculating, of course. Let's go and have a look around the other side. And here we go, round the front elevation. Isn't it strange these gates are actually in incredibly good condition um, kind of just isolated there on their own but um, you know that would have been that would have been a grand old house grand old house originally wouldn't it I would just so love to go in little heart shapes in the shutters there and then we've got a little Juliet balcony which is oddly above um, some arched entrance that would have been a, an open entrance originally you can see there's block work below always another good sign is the sheer number of chimney stacks we've got one just behind here and then we've got two three four five these are huge look this one at the end has got four coming off so that one's feeding four fires that's probably eight fires that's probably two that's probably three so you've got um you know you've got a fair amount of uh, open fires what a shame, it's just sat here, boarded up, doing nothing. So this is the uh, one of the buildings in the garden. But uh, just look, it needs to be re-roofed and new timbers, new gutters, have the subsidence sorted, sort the render out. So a small building like that, all of a sudden you're in 20, 30,000. Beautiful little well here. What a shame. Cleared, ready for winter, wintering the plants. It's got like little needles for teeth. So this is that lovely metal, uh, like a shepherd's crook that goes all the way up. And if you remember when we first 
took all this apart, these fittings were just sort of, sort of floating around, but they're lovely and secure now. So that makes a really nice positive connection, which is lovely. And that engages in that little hole just at the top there. And we've put, um, put the bracket on here, which is another stay. So that means the right hand leaf is the one that normally stays secure. And this left one is the one that just opens. for now, uh, we're securing this left leaf uh, with this rather beautiful um, acorn, that acorn knob. Oh, let me bring you around there. That acorn knob. Um, this was off another door. Actually, I can't remember which one it was, but one of the other doors. Um, I'm actually going to make a huge wooden support, which will go underneath this. And like a castle, it will drop down into some big brackets. Uh, that way it will be a lovely secure door from the inside, but that's that's the plan to do that later. If you remember, we had this little puppy that we saved. It's missing its top, um, but it's fine. There's plenty to get hold of there. Um, so we've got that in. And then let me show you the other problem we had, which is why I've been spending my time this morning repairing the side door. Uh, so these are just a, a set of doors that we made previously in one of our previous vlogs. These these give us the entry into the left-hand side of the barn, the, the side of the barn, if you like. But look, let me just show you this problem that we've got with all of these stones. I think this is limestone, uh, but I'm no mason, but I'm not sure. It's quite a soft um, stone. I know that because I can chisel some out. But you can see that crack there. And what's happened is that hinge has got two tangs, two long tangs that go into this uh, into this block and they open up like that which then supports this pin here for the hinge now over time this is rusted and that rust has caused that those tanks to expand and as they've expanded they've blown uh, the the stone and that's happened on the barn that's why there's those redundant hinges left because a couple of those have already gone it's happened to us around the barn in other in other areas and recently it happened to us right here so this whole piece let me just show you this whole piece here um, came away there was originally this uh, this isn't the original this isn't the original one but originally there was a, a tang that went in here and that's opened up opened up opened up to such a degree that when the door was opened it took it took this corner of the the block away so that's going to have to be filled with concrete but in the meantime i've got a hardwood pad that i've put uh behind these huge bolts these bolts are you know at least that much meat going in beyond that block they're enormous uh, with with um with some big plugs so that's done a great job of holding that door square so if we want to we can open that door up um but um i had to swap because of that i had to swap the way the door opened originally this this door had that stay on it so this was the leaf that opened and i don't want to cause undue stress to that joint even though it's really strong now um really strong but obviously doors move about so i've swapped it around reused some old furniture here had to make up a little catch this morning just to take just to take that so that's what i've been doing in order for us to have access to the barn and get in and out of the barn and lock those doors that we're working on from the inside. So one of the things that I have noticed is the weather has turned almost overnight. Um, the seasons are really upon us now. It's much cooler, certainly cooler in the evening. Uh, this is a bit of a, a, a sun trap here, um, and it was a bit of a struggle to get these to get these doors done. Um, but uh, the weather has turned, so I'm, I'm on long sleeve jersey and uh, back with my trousers now. So just let's show you what's to do, and we're gonna get cracking with the last few jobs on if here. If you remember, behind those boards there, there's a diagonal strut that goes up. So I just wanna tie all of these boards into that. So we're gonna put a colch boat. Oh, in fact, there's one just here already. Uh, we're gonna put one at the other end, and then we're gonna mark a diagonal between the two. And then on every board, we're gonna just put in a countersink screw. And then I'm going to repeat that on this bottom one. So there's a diagonal strut that goes up to here. And again, it's just going to tie all these boards 
into that now, strut. Now a couple of people have noticed um, that this bottom hinge here is slightly different in design to this one. It's had that tang there, it's had that cut off. And do you remember there was originally a small door in that side which weakened the whole structure which we're not putting back actually. Um, but my, you, you're absolutely right, the people that have mentioned it looks odd, it does. And it plays with my symmetry because I love symmetry. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a fake section so it'll be the same length as that, the same width and, and uh, size as that. And then obviously, because we've already got those colch bolts going through, we'll just take those bolts out and we'll just bolt that timber, fake timber arm back in there. That'll give it its symmetry and it'll all look tiddly and square. So we've had this movement in the, in, in the stonework here, but actually it's all in the render. What's happened is, this is quite thick, this render they put on, whoever and uh, water has got behind it. It's really good up top. It's absolutely perfect up top. It's like a rock hard concrete. I remember when I had to make that channel. But as we come down here, water's got in behind it and it's blown this render out, giving the impression the whole building is sagging here, but it's not as bad as it looks. It does look bad, but it's not that bad. It doesn't worry me at all. And let me just, let me just show you. You can hear it, can't you? You can hear that difference, but there we go look so we need to go around basically take this this render so off we can start that today might be able to knock out uh, the loose render but the other job I want to do today is fill in these gaps here and uh, what's happened in the past is obviously there has been some movement and you know we're not we haven't got the money to rebuild this gable end which is what it needs really um, we're just going to stabilize it as best we can and the walls are really thick. Look how thick they are. So not too worried about it, but I do need to make it weather tight. And I'm going to feather in a piece of timber all the way down to roughly about there and secure it this way into this frame. So when the, when the door leaf closes, it'll close tightly on it and that'll give us a nice finish. And we need to do that on the other side as well. That shouldn't be too complicated. And our followers have mentioned the good idea of putting in a weatherboard at the bottom here. That's something we might do, because it could almost act as a bit of a sacrificial piece of timber. So it, it, it would lay slightly further down than that line. So any water hitting it would drip underneath, start rotting it from underneath, but it wouldn't be able to climb. The water wouldn't be able to go down and then back up onto the end grain. But... Um, I also need, when we've got the cement mixer out and we're doing the, the mix, I also need to form a new threshold. So we need to do that. Should I do something with the end grain at the top? Because water will, um, you know, it will, it will find its way onto that. So I'm thinking of how we could cap that off. Um, whether we do that with just a load of preservatives or whether we use um, some sort of covering. So the first job we're going to do is we're going to put in our our screws just to tie the centers of the boards into those diagonal struts as we mentioned. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to find the boards from the other side and we're going to put a coach bolt at the top and the bottom, so the lowest part and the, the top part, and then on the outside I'm going to draw a line between. So we are coach bolt the top and bottom and then we're going to screw uh, along the center. So let's just do that. So that's our, our mark top and bottom. So I'll just run a straight edge. So a piece of timber here, and then we just mark that line. So we're going to use some colch bolts. Uh, this is what we've used to construct the entire um, door. So when that goes into the timber, you get a nice finish on this side. You get a lovely, that'll be painted, but a nice chrome finish. And then can you see there's a, a square edge to the top of this? So what happens is when you knock that into the wood, that square edge bites and allows you then to tighten up on the other side without this whole thing twisting. And it gives you a nice, gives you a nice finish. So this is our hole at the top. Let's take our colch bolts, a nice tight fit. Please excuse my scabby hammer. This is one I've been using to knock masonry out. I have got some nice hammers. 
you see that's gone in tight, it'll go in tighter. That's nice and tight. I just wanted to show you this tool which I absolutely love. It's a, a conventional drill bit, so we're going to use that drill bit just to pilot screw holes for this. Grub screw there, so you can adjust how high or low that countersink goes. So I've got it quite low uh, because obviously I just want just want to be drilling through the plank and then allowing these to self tap into the strut behind, so it's nice and strong. Isn't that lovely? Let me just show you how that works. It saves so much time. Now I've already marked my centre. So there it is there. So you see that gives it a lovely finish. So that head is below the surface now. And it's just giving it a beautiful countersink. So it's just a, a top tip to save a lot of time. So I'm going to carry on doing these and then do the ones at the top. The animals are giving me a hand with the woodwork. <laughs> I think they like the sawdust. I can't see how they like the noise, but uh, anyway, what I'm doing now is just making the fillets to go into these gaps beside the frame. And I haven't videoed the, uh, I've just ripped this down, just planed it off to give it a nice finish. Um, that piece is going to go into here, I haven't fitted it yet. It's gonna go into this, this here, where this stone has moved and we're not going to rebuild the gable end, so we're just gonna make the gaps up. There we go. That's, uh, where are we? That's just that fillet just there. So once it's got a bit of paint, let's take a look at it from, uh, from back a step. And you see, I've just continued that gap from the end of the frame. There's about a centimeter breathing space going all the way up now. The fact that it's kind of curving off is okay because all my uprights are dead upright. So your eye should be drawn to those rather than the gap. Okay, it's just starting to rain, look. I don't know if you can see how angry the sky is coming this way. It's very, very dark over here. Um, which is a shame because I wanted to get some weatherproofing on the doors, but they'll be okay for a few days. Section here, I think, is gonna come out and then anywhere over there that's blown. And then I'm gonna do that section, try and do it piecemeal. And then while we've got the cement mixer out, I'm gonna slip form a new uh, threshold and then we'll do this side as well. So Anna's discovered that Bella, baby Bella, well, she's not a baby anymore. Hmm. She's got uh, a burst crop, is it, honey? Yeah. So could you just explain what that is? Well, she's um, got big bosoms, as we've said before. 
some hint of a big buzzing yeah. through the uh, food. You can see here. I don't know what you can yeah, see. I can see that. Yeah. This is where their tummy is, if you like, which is called the crop. And because she's had had rather a large one, the food was hanging down here, um, which meant her food wasn't getting digested. Because up here, the, the food goes down a pipe down here into the wherever it goes, the tummy bit. Yeah. Um. Anyway. So this bit, if it's sat too, if it's too big and it hangs down here, it's going to sit there. It's not going to go anywhere, it's not going to get digested properly. Yeah. So we have been putting the bra on, um, but it has burst. It's got too big and it's burst. She was getting better, wasn't she? Yeah. This morning, wasn't it? It's only today, this morning I took it off. Yeah, it's burst. So now we've got to clear it out with some tepid water and then we'll put the bra back on. And then we'll have to get some super glue and glue her together because it's not really a thing that vets really treat, you know, it's just one of those things. If they've got a big buzz and often they get put to sleep or just left it Seems out, so you know. weird, doesn't it? Yeah. You super glue, but Yeah, but they don't feel that there's no discomfort, there's no she knows we're doing a good and the what the the only thing that could really happen is she gets infected because the food in her crop is sat there not mm. doing anything and it goes sour. Like any food if you put food in the bin it goes rotten. Mm. So that's what's happening to poor Bella. Um, it's not actually too bad. It's not too bad. So we're going to wash it out, get rid of as much as we can, and then put a bra on. And as you say, we can't even call a... Well, I suppose a vet would treat her and we paid, but... Well, they will. Um, what they, they do is they usually treat the infection. Well, she hasn't got an infection yet, thankfully. Um, but they don't really do anything. And especially out here, it's hard to find a better little treat a chicken. Mm. They're commodities, aren't they? Okay. Yeah. Good sign.